Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Hembling, the Head of Marketing and Business Development at RAISE and I am absolutely thrilled to be here today with the ever so delightful Dr. Catherine Isco. Catherine is a mindset mentor, a self-professed shoe addict, whose mission is to activate a person's dormant potential through education, inspiration and a touch of tough love. Welcome Catherine. And thank you for having me, really excited about this morning. My pleasure. Shall we jump straight in? Um, Go for it. We love that you describe yourself as a mindset mentor. Can you tell us what that means and who your audience is? Absolutely. So I'm passionate about learning where words come from. Um, I never know how to say it. It's etymological, but basically that means, you know, why words are what they are. And if you look at the background of mentor, it's actually from Iliad's Odyssey. And without going into like crazy details, Athena, the goddess of wisdom, actually sort of portrayed herself, um, disguised herself as a mentor. And effectively what that means is that you share not only your wisdom and experience, but you act as an experienced and trusted advisor. And I think this is something that you do over a lifetime. I don't think, you know, you're born a mentor. It takes time. And at the very embryonic age of 42, I'm still learning, but I think I've already learned quite a bit. So the reason why I call myself a mentor and not a coach is because in general, I think coaching is more of a reactive kind of process in regards to problem to solution. Whereas mentors are really proactive rather than reactive, meaning that they help you navigate the minefield of what you're about to go through before you actually go through it. And this really expedites the path, path to success. And I don't know about you, that's personally what I want is I think at a certain age, you're less inclined to want a person to kind of blow smoke up your ass for lack of a better word. You want someone that is going to give you objective feedback to expedite where you want to go. In regards to the audience, uh, it's definitely a wide range. So it could be anyone from a student ready to graduate. I do a lot of mentorship for the University of WA, Curtin and Murdoch to the mum, or as you guys say, M-U-M, mum. Yes. <laughs> who wants to turn into version 2.0, perhaps after a birth or maybe mm -hmm. after, uh, you know, an empty nest kind of situation to a person who is just disgruntled by the status quo of their life or relationship and even C-suite executives. It really doesn't matter where a person is. I work with people who have the foresight to understand that the greatest battles are not won alone. And you need to have someone there by your side, not in front, not behind you, but by your side to help you through the discomfort of achieving significant things. And there's four really big characteristics that I need for the person to have. First, they have to be open-minded to doing things differently. If you're expecting that this process is gonna be easy and the same thing over again, that's not gonna happen committed to the long game. It's similar to diets and exercise. Don't expect to undo what you've done in 10 years overnight. That doesn't happen. I'm not a magician, even though sometimes I want to be. You also have to be ready to experience discomfort. This is probably the most important thing that oftentimes people on their way to success, they look at the feelings of discomfort as evidence of failure. And we have to warp our heads around this and understand that discomfort is part of the process. And most importantly, they have to be open to receiving feedback, which is not as easy as it sounds. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The feedback part is tough, I think. Very, very, very tough. Yeah. Do you have a way that you kind of assess that people have those attributes before they um, work with you? Like any therapeutic process, uh, the most important thing is to establish trust with a client. And oftentimes people look as a coach or a mentor, a counselor, or a psychologist as this is going to be the right fit no matter what. We have to understand that mentorship and counseling and psychology is kind of like dating. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily going to fit. So it's through that process that you can kind of pick up on one another and say, okay, I think this relationship is going to work long term. I'm not for everyone and I never express that I am, even though, you know, 
egotistically, I would love, <laughs> like love to that to be, but you pick up on these things. But mm -hmm. I should also say that picking up on these things is actually very beneficial to the process because it's the here and now of the mentor and mentee relationship that's going to give me clues on how you uh, act and behave in the outside world. Because at the end of the day, I'm taking your truth as truth when oftentimes we have a warped view of our own per personal situation. So that gives me evidence. Do you really act that way yes. in the real world? Yes. Well, it's our own version of truth, isn't it? That's it. That's exactly it. Catherine, one of the things you encourage your clients to do is to live a courageous, kick-ass life, which I absolutely love that. What is the first step to achieving that goal? So this is a quite complex question that deserves probably a more complex answer. But in short, it's becoming crystal clear on what you want to achieve, which sounds so, so simple, doesn't it? But oftentimes I believe that we go through life and we're just kind of randomly shooting at targets because we want our ego boosted. We want to say, oh, we've done that, we've done that, we've done that, we've done that. And oftentimes the only reason why we're doing that is not only for our own ego boost, but we're doing it to satisfy the needs of someone else. And that's through the process of mentorship, we help refine so your target is very clear and that's the benefits that's where the benefits of motivation can really be derived is motivation is really expedited when you focus your energy like a laser beam as yes. is, <laughs> on a specific goal. And so it's really becoming clear on the target. And even your listeners right now can probably attest to this that, you know, you have your to-do list. And I can honestly say that every single person that I've worked with, I can cut down that to-do list by about 50% and really focus your energy on this top half. Typically the top half that you don't want to do is usually the most effective. That's good. Catherine, how do you think we can use science to understand our behaviors and promote change in ourselves? It's very similar to mentorship. You know, as I always say, you can either learn from your own mistakes or you can learn through the mistakes and experience of others. Science provides us with this awesome route to learn through other people's work. It's kind of like, why would you invent, reinvent the wheel when someone has already done it? And you have to remember that science does things under very specific confines of objective knowledge. They look at, okay, if I do this, will this happen and what are the probability or the chances that this is going to happen so as an example let's say you're struggling with comparing yourself to others you know you're constantly swimming but looking in each other's lanes for me i could either figure out how to fix that by myself or i could dive into research and say okay the most effective way to reduce my levels of comparison with other people and focus on my own growth is doing as X, Y, Z. And there's multiple theories of comparison. For example, a lot of people don't know that there's upwards comparisons and downward comparisons, which both have their benefits. We can extract knowledge through science and again, expedite our path to achievement. Grace were involved in the pattern of your smartphone app, My Physique. Can you explain to me what that app is and how people use it to achieve confidence goals? Absolutely. So in short, the, the app is really a software that helps to, or that dimensionalizes a person or an object, in our case, a human being. And the reason why I love it is really based on the self-regulation theory, which proposes that self-monitoring or thinking, okay, how am I doing here, is going to expedite your path and your success towards one's goal. And it does this by reinforcing the efforts that you put into achieving that goal. So I think we all here have gone on a diet, have gone on the January 1st, I'm never going to eat X, Y, Z again. It's hard to do. And without having that feedback of saying, wow, this is actually working, we're never going to change our behaviors long term. And it's this change in behaviors long term that is actually going to produce the biggest effect. But here's the thing, changing behaviors is actually quite 
difficult, especially when it's based on self-monitoring, because oftentimes we fudge what we see or fudge the results and we're not consistent. So the benefit of this app, especially when it comes to confidence and building confidence in our own health behaviors, is it gives you truthful answers. It's basically objective numerical answers and it helps you be consistent. And that's again why I love science. Science is there to really make your life easier if you know how to uh, apply it effectively. And that's what this application, this software does. I love that, Catherine, because sometimes you don't even know um, if you're on that journey of weight loss or changing your body in some way, you actually don't even know if what you see in the mirror is accurate or if it's your mind playing tricks on you or even if it's the mirror or can you trust the judgment of other people around you who are giving you feedback? And so I think something like that, um, that as you say, gives you that concrete data. You can't argue with the data ever. Um, that's exactly it. That is, as the, the truth, the source of truth. Yeah, that's, that's it. Like that. um, today's an exciting day for you. It's the big launch of your new approach to, as you say, to make the world remarkable. Uh, what can we expect from you in your next step in your journey? Absolutely. Well, it's, it's actually based on that journey in the past sort of six to eight months. I believe I've made a significant leap in my own personal development and growth. And I think like we all can relate to is sometimes when you, when you have that internal change, whether that's weight loss or hitting a health goal or, you know, uh, getting a degree, you want to exude this on the outside. And that's where the renaissance of the brand, of the visual part of the brand really came out when you see the dark eggplants and purples and the symbolic rings that really exemplify continuous learning and this like infinite loop that life provides us and also the importance of connection between people. But in regards to what I'm trying to achieve, I think now more than ever before, the world needs more remarkable people to help other people do remarkable things. Effectively, we need people to lead and inspire others. And I'm doing this through multiple platforms. What's going to be coming up actually in the future is a community that helps to empower and educate remarkable people because effectively, as Mother Teresa said, I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast that ripple effect. So uh, I'll be essentially releasing a platform that helps to educate and inspire along with a bit of tough love, uh, an application that helps people do this. But in the short term, essentially what's happening now is I'm going to be doing this through newly released programs that are both available for teams and individuals, as well as mentorship. And I want to do this for people who are ready to take that next significant leap in their life to accomplish truly remarkable things. And effectively, this has come over years and years of seeing specific ingredients that are needed to take a person from A to B. I've just put them in a systematic evidence-based platform to expedite that success. Without wanting to sound cheesy, how do people find out about the program? Where do, where could they go? Because I want to sign up immediately. <laughs> All right, absolutely. So the, best place, the best place is going to my website, drcatherine.com. It's uh, currently just a holding site, but it's a beautiful holding site, I must say. And it has actually all imagine. the information you need. You can download brochures on the mentorship memberships, as well as the team and individual programs. Or if you just want to bypass all of that, info at drcatherine.com. And unless I'm shoe shopping, I'll get back to you within 24 hours. <laughs> I want to see your shoe wardrobe, personally. Yes. Um, Catherine, working with young girls to develop body confidence is one of your passions. What advice do you give to young girls who, with social media, who are, are more aware than ever of body image? I'm particularly keen about this, Catherine. I've got a 13-year-old daughter who, you know, I can see her straight away. She's just entered high school and she's looking around and com really comparing herself um, with me and also with the girls in her year. So um, I, I, I'm really kind of interested to hear what you have to say about this. I, I, I can see you saying, help me. <laughs> yeah, help me. It's, yeah. It's, it's a tough one because, I mean, we, we were teenagers at one point and we know that we don't take advice. We know everything. Hi. You know, we're the smartest people in the world. And, and the other thing is we have to understand that unfortunately now, 
books are still judged by its cover. So it's, it's a very tricky one because I think a different, a different recipe is needed for all people. But I know from a personal perspective, uh, in going through 20 years of negative body image, the best thing for a young person is to be effectively modeled by someone that they respect, i.e. a mom, a teacher. And this starts with how you treat yourself. You want to act or be the person you want them to become. So little things like when you look in the mirror, do you say, oh, or do you say, ah, you know, there's <laughs> little, little things. And also the focus on appearance. One of my favorite, um, uh, this, this wonderful woman named Taryn Brumfit, she's a leader in the body image industry. She yeah. produced a fa fantastic documentary called Embrace, which I highly recommend to watch with both your sons and your daughters. And effectively, she talks about this one time where her daughter came out with this beautiful dress on and said, Mommy, do I look pretty? And she responded, yes, you look pretty, but tell me what you're going to do in that dress. So if we continue to focus on what an outside appearance um, looks like and how that sort of benefits benefits in the world, we're going to be continuously having problems with it. So focus, as cliche as it sounds, focus on what your child does, how they do it, the efforts that they put into their schoolwork, their friendships, if they clear the, the table properly, say, oh, thanks so much for helping me, and less focus on outward appearance. That's some really good advice. Thank you. I feel under the pressure with her all of the time. You do, as a mum, I think you feel that you've got to, you are role modelling every minute of every day. You know, they are watching, as you say, um, and Taryn's work is brilliant as well. Yeah. The, the one thing I'll say on that is talk to them about that. Remember, the more human you can be, the more they're going to trust you. If they place you on this pedestal, mm. it's going to be very, very hard for them to learn from you because they're going to say that's impossible. If you say, you know what, I would love your feedback. Mommy is trying her best when it comes to being a great role model for, for you. How am I doing? What can I do better? You know, oh, get them, I like that. Yeah. Get them, in, get them involved in the process. Yeah. You know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink kind of thing. So be involved. Tackle it like you would a business plan. How would you derive the best outcomes for your relationship? It's about understanding each other's needs. That's when you can come together, develop trust, and get those good outcomes. That's fabulous advice. Thank you. I'm imagining as well, I'm going completely off topic here, but I'm imagining as well that kind of brings together that nice sense of team that you need to have with your teenager as well at that time instead of being on opposite sides of the fence. So that's um, really great advice. Thank you. That's it. Catherine, back to you. Um, as a successful female entrepreneur, who inspires you? This is, I, I get asked this a lot and it's so tough because there's so many incredible people. I mean, we just spoke about Emma Isaacs, you know, a person yeah. that we both revere. The, the one that always comes up for me is my great grandmother, which obviously no one knows her. Uh, she's since passed, but there are legacy stories of her. And obviously I met her as well for, for several years of my life. But effectively, a short summary of the story is, is that she, um, she was in Bratislava uh, during the communist regime and she was Jewish and the Gestapo effect effectively came to get her and she said basically to them you can either throw me off the balcony balcony or you can shoot me right here I'm not coming with you and you have to remember she's basically my size she was actually shorter I think she was only four foot eleven a tiny mm -hmm. little thing and she was always pointing her finger to people don't you tell me this nevertheless they slunk away. She was able to escape and come to North America, specifically to New York, and start an incredible business out of the basement of her home, and which essentially then grew into three factories employing only women. You have to remember, this is back in the 50s. This is yep. not done by a female. But the story that really hits home for me is one of incredible resilience when she was trying to sell her samples to, you know, Saks and Bloomingdale's and so forth. She would never take the subway because she had to save money. 
And effectively, after a long day of very uh, lots of failures, no sales, she went to Saks and she said to the salesperson, you don't have to take it, just tell me that you like it. And they took on her sample. And then she proceeded to ride across the road to Bloomingdale's and saying, well, Saks has it, don't you want it? So Fair she enough. hustled. Yes. And I think for me, it's those kind of stories that I know her. And I know how she really acts with the world around her. And she goes completely against the norms. And that's really inspirational for me because I don't have a recipe book, book for what I'm doing. I am trying to do something significantly different, both with me, myself personally, but also with my brand and services. To do that is shit scary, to be honest. So mm. you got to have some good cajones. And my great-grandmother sure as a heck had a big pair of those. That's a remarkable story. Um, I, I like hearing stories like that. And um, it must feel really nice that you're connected to a person like that too. And that you've been able to, you know, firsthand have those stories passed down to you. That's really nice. Thank you. Finally, as a self-proclaimed shoe addict, can we ask you just how many shoes does Dr. Catherine have in her closet? I think I might plead the fifth on this one, but... Uh, <laughs> I think at last count, it was about 90. Wow. Which, to see, to me, that, that doesn't sound too much. That sounds like I really need to hit triple digits. So I'm, but here, okay, let me just explain. It makes you just want to hit a bigger goal. <laughs> it's, all, it's always about more. But each pair of my shoes has a story. And let me just let me just quickly say the reason behind my shoe. Yeah, when, I was, when I was going through my very very tough time, my negative body image, and I was um, uh, I was suffering from major depression and just really frustrated at, at life. And I think all women can uh, associate with this. A shoe always fits. You know, no matter how you feel about your body, no matter how you feel about the world around you, there's something about a shoe that literally and figuratively elevates a person and studies have actually shown that it actually very very small changes in your brain and the way your brain works when you wear heels and one of my favorite designers is Christian Louboutin and he's become highly popularized you know all the actresses wear them and so forth but my interest is actually about the designs the the philosophy of the design behind his shoes and he says a heel is the extension of a female's strength. And for me, when I wear his shoes, this, this is why I love those shoes. Not because they're on the cover of every magazine, because he understands the mindset of a woman. When they get a new pair of shoes, they walk out that store, they hair flip, check their nails. There's something <laughs> almost transcendent about that. There he is, yes. And hence why I'm very passionate about shoes. Oh, that's fantastic. I feel like I need to go and count my shoes now. <laughs> or maybe just go shopping. Just go shopping. Just find some new ones. I um, know all the good sites to get the best discounts too. I'll be getting those from you. Thank you. <laughs> um, Catherine, I can't thank you enough for talking with us today. Um, I'm very much looking forward to hearing more about your mindset program and, um, and seeing you succeed in that. Thank you again. My absolute pleasure.